Good afternoon. I'd like to ask everybody to please rise while the family enters.
Thank you. Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Day. I'm the care pastor here at Calvary Community Church. And on behalf of our entire congregation and our entire staff, we'd like to welcome you. Our facilities are yours. Um, I'll, I'll let you know that, that our congregation and our staff have been praying for Karen and Jordan and uh, all of your family for this past week. We've been praying for the Ventura County Sheriff's Department and um, we appreciate you and um, we love you. We want you to know that. That's the way we feel here at Calvary. We know that this has been a difficult time uh, for all of us. And we know that this is a, a difficult day and yet this is an important day that we come to honor Sergeant Ron Helis's life. Would you agree with that? This is an important day to come and to show our gratitude for his life. This is not a funeral per se. This is a memorial service where we come to celebrate Ron and his faith in Jesus Christ and his family. And so I think uh, we've come to stand up for a man today. So I think we should start by saying if Sergeant Ron Helis has touched your life in any way, I'd like you to get up and let's give him a standing ovation right now. Would you do that, please? be seated. Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Smith and on behalf of the family we would like to thank you for being here. Ron was my uncle and godfather and he was as protective as those titles would suggest. He was always looking out for his family and friends. Years ago after I received my learner's permit Ron overheard at Thanksgiving that I had never driven on the freeway and that I was a bit nervous about the prospect. He then volunteered to take me out in his new blue truck. At that point, I was more worried about wrecking his truck than driving on the freeway. However, with his encouragement, I was, I was able to conquer my fear of freeway driving. At the same time, I was still honing my basic driving skills because as we pulled back up to the house, I ran the side mirror right into the call box <laughs> and scratched Ron's brand new truck. But instead of getting upset, he calmly thought of my feelings first and about the room full of people we'd be returning to and said, let's just keep this our secret. And don't worry, it's just a truck. Ron understood what was most important. He valued people and experiences. Every year, he would, he would take a trip to Mammoth with his son, Jordan, and they would go camping and fish, and he, re he truly treasured that time with him. The next, he would spend the next year talking about the years past and the upcoming trip that they would have, and he would just go on and on about how much fun they would have together. He couldn't wait until my son was old enough so he could bring him along and teach him how to fish. In the last few days, our family has experienced an outpouring of love that is nothing short of inspiring. 
We are overwhelmed by the level of care and sympathy that this community, our community, has shown us. My family's world has been shaken by the loss of a husband, a father, an uncle, a brother, a nephew, son, and dear friend. We mourn with all of the others who lost their loved ones. There are many more nights of pain and processing to come, and in those times we may feel lost, alone, and as though the world is full of darkness. But I pray that we may find comfort in knowing, as Ron did, that this world is only temporary and that we are not alone. As it is written in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Please pray with me. Lord, I pray that you would fill our hearts with a peace that can only come from you. That you would remind us daily that while Ron was always the first to care and love us here on earth, that he is now resting in your care. In times of sorrow and doubt, I pray that you would guide us to you and that we would find comfort in your plan and in your will. I pray that you would be with Karen and Jordan and everyone whose lives Ron has so deeply touched, and that they may see the beautiful sacrifice that Ron made and know that in life and in death, he put others before himself. Lord, we thank you for the time we had with Uncle Ron. Thank you for blessing our family and our community with him. In your name we pray, amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Well, I once was lost, but now. was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear freely how precious did that grace of the eye I first
when we've been here ten thousand years bright shining is the sun where we know less days ought to sing God's sweet praise than when we first be gone. Could I ask everybody to stand up and sing this last chorus with us one time? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. was blind, but now I see. It's humbling to be in this room with y'all, so many heroes in this room. And today we're here to honor this hero, Mr. Ron Helis, that's touched us all here in America, touched the world. I met the family earlier, and I, I told them that uh, they're probably going to need to change the definition in the dictionary of hero. I think from now on it can just be a picture of Ron Helis and his bravery. This man's a true definition of a hero. I also um, heard you say that he would give anything, give the shirt off his back for other people, and um, gave his own life. And um, this is a song about that selfless dedication. This man is a true definition of some gay bow. I knew a man called him Sandy Kane. Few folks even knew his name. But a hero, yes, was he. Left a boy, come back a man. Still many just don't understand. About the reasons we are free. Can't forget the look in his eyes or the tears he cried as he said these words to me. All gave some, and some gave all, and some stood through. For the red, white, and blue And some had to fall If you ever think of me Think of all your liberties And recall Yeah, recall Some gave all
Sandy Kane is no longer here, but his words are all oh so clear. As they echo throughout our land. For all his friends who gave us all, who stood the ground and took the fall. Help their fellow man. Love your country, live a pride. Don't forget those who died. America, can't you see? All gave some, some gave all. Some stood through for the red, white, and blue, and some had to fall. If you ever think of me, think of all your liberties and recall. You yeah, recall, some gave all. If you'd like to, you can thank them. That's a memory you won't forget. That's a gift. I want to draw your attention to a sheet of paper that was handed you as you came in the door. It's a memory sheet. I think that's what it says on it. I think one of, um, we're going to ask you to write some stories about Ron on those. You know, I think one of the really great gifts that God gives us is memory. Some of us get a little older and we don't think we have that good a memory, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, as I even speak of this, you're thinking right now, of something that you and Ron did, good or bad, although he was pretty clean. Um, we'd like you to write those stories down. Take the time in the lobby after the service. There's tables everywhere. You'll see baskets, wicker baskets on all these tables that have black tablecloths. And if you'll write those stories and put them in the basket, we're going to give Karen and Jordan, volumes of these stories. Listen to me. Listen to me. These things just will fill their heart for years. So please do that. Memories. We need to make memories. Memories like Ronald Lee Helis was born July 21st, 1964 in West Hills Hospital. Born to Richard and Lois Helis of Canoga Park. Ron's dad uh, worked in the aerospace industry. Ron went to Parkman Junior High, that's when they were junior highs, and both Taft and Canoga Park High Schools. He was a baseball player when he was younger, loved baseball. But when he was in high school, he played football. And his dad, Jordan says, my dad was at all the games. He said, the problem was my dad just couldn't go sit down. So he was on the sidelines constantly screaming. He loved to ride dirt bikes with his friends and his father. As a teenager, 
Ron took Shotokan Karate. He worked out at the West Valley Karate Club with a special man some of you may know, um, Tony Johnson. Tony Johnson came around, Ron, his life. He mentored a bunch of young people and believed in building young people to be men of integrity. And so Tony was a mentor to these kids. And Ron was a part of the Lost Boys Club after his father passed away. It was made up of kids who didn't have fathers or simply came from families where the father wasn't present. And Tony was there with them and mentored those kids. And as you saw Ron, as you worked with Ron, as you knew Ron, he was one of these men that loved to build people. I wonder if it came from that. In 1986, while going to church with Brett and Donna Major, Ron gave his life to Jesus Christ and became a Christian. And that experience and that commitment would change his life forever and set a whole new direction for how he saw life and how he saw people and how he saw eternity. He became a follower of Jesus. So following high school, Ron attended Pierce College. And in the fall of 1978, and I'm laughing because Karen was laughing when she told me this. She said, I said, well, how'd you meet Ron? She said, well, I met him in an anatomy class. And then she starts laughing. And it was in the anatomy class that Karen was asking Ron for help. Not in anatomy, but dissecting a cat, a stray cat. So Ron and Karen would begin to study, study and study and study for the anatomy class. And at the end of the anatomy class, um, Karen got the A and Ron got the B. It's the way it always is, guys. <laughs> so their official first date was on this date today, I think 31 years ago, November 15th, 1987. Isn't that wild? Ron proposed on September 3rd, 1988, and she said, man, was this guy nervous. And here's what he did. It was a pretty good idea, actually. He bought this beautiful ring. It was in a, I believe it was in a blue box. And at some time at dinner, he uh, slipped it into Karen's purse. She had a black purse, like a lot of purses are. And so at one point, she went to the ladies' room and opened her purse. And in this purse, she sees this blue box. So she opens the blue box and sees this beautiful engagement ring, and she freaks out. I mean, she's, like, fearful. She's thinking, oh, my gosh, somebody bought this beautiful ring for somebody. And they... So, and it's a black purse like anybody could have. So she's like really, really angst about this. So she comes out of the bathroom, goes up to Ron, and says, Ron, look at this. And, and she opens it up, and Ron gets down on one knee right there in the restaurant, asks her to marry him. History. They were in the old Charlie Brown's restaurant, which is now the borderline. How ironic. Here's what I learned. That man loved that woman, and that woman loved that man, and that carried through their marriage. So they got married July 1st, 1989 at the United Methodist Church in um, Thousand Oaks. They were members of a brand new church plant where you start churches, you know, in the valley. I think it was in the valley, Fountain Springs Church, but it was such a new church they needed a place. Ron and Karen would then find their first apartment in Thousand Oaks. Ron began the academy in September of 1989. Karen went to work for a Gura family chiropractic and they joined a brand new church in Newbury Park. Um, their new life was headed forward. R Ron graduated the academy in October of 1990. He worked in the jail for a time, of course, was a, a detective working property crimes. He worked SWAT from 1994 to 
2001. He worked narcotics. He was a firearms instructor for Ventura County Sheriff's Department. When he was promoted to sergeant, he worked the jail again, of course. And then he was moved to East Valley where he was a patrol sergeant with a crew of deputies. And I think he had a partner patrol sergeant and she had her group of deputies. Sergeant Ronald Helis served for 29 years with integrity. That's what we all hope to do and whatever we do is to serve and finish well and serve with integrity. Karen said he lived for that job and for those deputies. Ron had his master's in administrative leadership from University of Oklahoma. During that time, he did the SI, SLI series. He loved mentoring and building people. He loved his deputies. He cared about their lives, their professional lives, their, their private lives. He would say to Karen, I hope I'm making a difference both in the public and in the department. And even on the streets, he'd roll up, you know, this uh, cul-de-sac story where the kids are spinning their wheels and there's smoke going everywhere. And he'd, he'd roll up and he'd want to spend time with people on the streets and get to know them so they could get to know the sheriff's department. And this one story rolls up on these kids and they're going, we didn't do anything wrong. We didn't do anything wrong. And he says, oh, I know. I just want to see your motors. Oh, pop your hoods. And he'd check out their, the motors and their cars and talk with them and spend time with them. And then someone told me this story, I can't tell you who, and I gag order. Every once in a while, not all the time, you heard me say that, right? Not all the time, but every once in a while, he'd pull somebody over, over for something simple and they'd say, I'm sorry, officer, I'm sorry, officer, I'm sorry, officer. And, He'd let them tell their story. And then he'd tell them why what they did was wrong. And then with his pad and his hand and his pen, he'd say, okay, if you tell me a good joke, I won't write you a ticket. <laughs> I apologize, Sheriff. <laughs> That's probably going to change the way your people do traffic. <laughs> Jordan Tyler Helis. What a great young man. Well, he was born March 16, 1994 at Desert Hospital. Now listen, Ron and Karen chose Jordan for adoption. They were there throughout the entire pregnancy. One of the things I've learned about this family is that they love Jesus. They get what that means and they, and they really work at in all aspects of their lives, living and loving like Jesus Christ every day. Pastor Charlie Maloney will be up here in a couple of minutes, and he'll read a few of the family's testimonies. They, they belong to the church in which Charlie served for, I don't know, decades, Camarillo Christian Church, and Jordan went to Cornerstone Christian School, which was a part of that church. Now Ron's family worships at Calvary Nexus and Camarillo. And Pastor Bruce Zachary, um, whom we love, uh, was in Turkey on a missions group with a missions group, or he'd be up here. And then we just found out he just came home. So he's here today. And um, they love Calvary Nexus. They love their pastor, Bruce Zachary. Ron believed in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That scripture drove the roots and the foundation into Ron and Karen and Jordan's lives and gave them direction every single day, how they did work, how they did family, how they did everything that they did, that they've done. Karen said that Ron was such a selfless human being, he always took care of her. Karen said that her husband valued their relationship. 
She said, uh, he made me a priority. He was an amazing husband and father, always protecting us. Listen to his favorite scripture. And if you knew him, you'll get this. His favorite scripture was Psalm 144.1. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Jordan talked about his dad always being there at his football games. Lauren talked about that. They hiked together, they backpacked together, they rode bikes together, they loved fishing together. If you knew Ron, he, Ron loved to fish, right? Ron loved to fish. Did I say that Ron loved to fish? Well, he loved to fish with his partner. Mammoth was the place, the Eastern Sierras, and they'd go up there uh, since, really, Jordan was five, a couple times a year. And then when Jordan became a teenager, two or three times a year. And he also uh, loved to follow bears. And um, so Jordan tells the story. He did. He loved wildlife. And when he saw bears, he'd follow bears with his camera. And then one day he followed a bear that was a sow that had two cubs. And the bear turned on him, and he ended up on the ground with his camera. So for those of you watching at home, do not follow bears. When I walked into... the Helis's house. I was greeted by a beautiful, decorated Christmas tree. So if you know them, they decorate early. And uh, she and Ron decorated that tree on the 7th. And their house, full of decorations, uh, all year long, maybe many of you do this, they buy gifts for Christmas and those gifts are already wrapped in other rooms. And the theme of that house is hope. It's so great because you see hope on, in frames, hope in standing things, hope all over the house. And uh, because they found hope in Jesus, the hope that has grounded them in their lives, the hope that has given them the strength to go through this time and, and the hope that they want you to have to know that God will give you the strength to get through this time, the hope that founded their lives through their faith in the person of Jesus Christ. And here's a scripture that is up on their home. It's good for us right now. It. it it's like medicine to us right now. Romans 5.3, it says we glory in or we even worship God in our sufferings because we know that sufferings produce perseverance and perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And it's not the hope, I hope I get my paycheck this week. It's, it's the hope that gives us strength for tomorrow. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us through Jesus Christ. What a beautiful, beautiful scripture. And Karen said, because of that hope, I'll accept this. But she said, I'll, I'll miss Ron's caring presence. She said she already has. I'll miss his laughter and his humor that has always filled this home. She also said she has been overwhelmed and blessed by the Ventura County Sheriff's Department and how you have treated she and her family. and by those that she knows and she doesn't know that have reached out to she and Jordan. We love you too. We will not stop praying and we will be there for you, all of us. I'd like to introduce Pastor Charlie Maloney to come up and read some of the family's testimonies.
is my, my honor to uh, read what uh, Karen has written about her husband. Uh, Barry Archie, Ron's father-in-law, expressed some beautiful words. And uh, on behalf of Camarillo Christian Church and Cornerstone Christian School and all of the relationships that exist because of those contacts, our prayers and our thoughts and our hearts go out to you, Karen, and Jordan, and to your family. Who was Ron Helis? Barry Archie writes. He was a husband, father, family member in a large Christian family. Ron loved talking to and being with people. He enjoyed helping others. If you ask him what he enjoyed most, he would say his relationship with God, being with his wife, his son, his family, fishing, of course, and being a sergeant. If you called him a hero, he'd probably laugh at you, and he would say he was just doing his job. Ron did something heroic. He helped save lives in a tragic, horrible incident that took 13 lives. Barry writes, as I watched the procession from the hospital to the Ventura, the Ventura Medical Examiner's Office, he said, I observed thousands of people lining the streets, people lining the bridges and stopped cars on the freeway to pay their respect for what Ron had done. Most of these people had never met him or knew him, but they honored him for his actions, actions that cost him his life. Barry said, I saw the goodness in people, including the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, many first responders, military, people at his gym, family, friends, the community, including many people who never met him. He said, I used to laugh at Ron's last name, Helis. But maybe God wants to use Ron to help heal us. I'd say amen to that. Jesus tells us to love one another, to be kind, to be loving, and to care for each other. Maybe God wants to use this situation to help heal us from all of the violence. Barry continues, if the goodness I saw from thousands is an example of who we are, then we need to exercise that goodness in every aspect of our lives. If we all helped and loved and cared for each other, wouldn't our world be a better place? Indeed. Love can conquer all. So showing that love with our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, that would be a good start to helping change our world. Ron called his wife shortly before the shooting. He told her that he loved her. That will remain with her the rest of her life. And all of us are touched by that kind of love and commitment. So he concludes, tell the people around you and the people nearest to you how much you love them, as we never know if this will be the last opportunity to express that love to those we love and care for. Hug your friends, hug your family, hug some strangers and treat them with kindness and respect, and we will be living in a better world. And remember, above all, he says, God loves you. John 15, 13 reminds us, a greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Karen has written this letter to her beloved husband, Ron, thank you for sharing the last 31 years with me. You were my husband and best friend. 
You were always the one who made me laugh and protected me from, from all that tried to harm me. Thank you for being you. My hero, my love, and my life. I will always love you and hold a special place in my heart that is only for you. I know that when God saw you enter heaven, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. I think we'd amen that as well. I'm so proud of you and the kind of person you were. I will miss you and your hugs and our life together. Rest now, sweetie. Save a place up there for me, and I will see you again. Love you forever. Karen. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine.
forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine 